Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King 2. And today, I'm going to be giving you part 2 of what if Naruto was turned into an android by Dr. Jiro. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual and share this to all of your friends near social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs of the other channels. What if Naruto was Aruchimaru's son? With multiple Keke Genkai. And also stay tuned for the rest of what is coming your way. And don't forget to comment down below and tell me if you're new so I can welcome you personally. All links for the channels will be down in the description. And don't forget to turn on the bell notification so exactly when I post. So without further ado, what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode begin now guys. So the last spot we left off, Dr. Drew was running from Goku friends as he was going to activate his ultimate android, an android that will even surpass Cell. Dr. Drew had made him up from the start, but not even he could get rid of some attributes about the android's body. There was a powerful demon sealed inside of this android and the chakra had grown and grown and grown over time, the other source of power that Dr. Drew did not know the name of. The beast had grown powerful inside of him. Dr. Drew had put him through several extreme protocols and now it was finally time he hoped that he could do this perfectly so Android 21 can come out and eliminate all of his foes so with that he release him. Android 21 had blonde hair, blue eyes and three whisker marks. As he looked confused that is when Drew realized that his memories were not there. So he would not remember what he can do or remember his techniques. He cursed at that. As he awakened 17 and 18, that is when Goku friends blew up the door as they enter inside. 17 did not like Dr. Dro talking, not to mention the remote that he had in his hand. 18 had took it away and destroyed it though. And 17 pushed his hand through his chest. 21 then announced that he was Naruto and not Android 21. As he destroyed Dr. Drew after 17 allowed him to do so. He then moved away. As Android 17 was going to wake up 16, the other Android that was sleeping there. That is when Chunks lost it as he fired a big key blast inside the room. However, Naruto was unaffected by it but his body floated upwards. It was almost like an instinct. As he arrived there, he watched as 18 was kicking off the lid of the other Android as Vegeta attacked him. Naruto was hit even though he had no idea what was going on or why this man was attacking him. He ended up losing it though as Vegeta would not stop. We then skip to all of them in a van as 17 had stole a van, a pink giant van. They were all inside as they were going to find and kill Son Goku. Meanwhile Vegeta was pissed. After Naruto lost it he broke both of Vegeta arms and almost ripped his head off. But he was speared because of the intervention from the others. So with that being said, Vegeta was on a rock where he had been for the past few hours raging as his powers fluctuating wildly. He was trying to reach the next level of Super Saiyan. Meanwhile that was going on. The group had made their way as they went clothes shopping until 18 ended up destroying the place and ruining their clothing. So they finally got to Goku house. As she went to go through Goku's wife closet, as she found something that she liked, as she got dressed. As for Naruto, he took one of Goku's orange gi and he was now wearing it. That is when the monster showed up. Cell was holding 17 by the neck with his tail. They were shot that he had got to him so fast as he blasted Naruto away. He tried to take 18 but Naruto blasted him away. As they got outside, they started to fight but Cell was tremendously powerful. 16 was nowhere to be seen. That is when Naruto gave in. 
He gave in to his programming and became cold and emotionless. He locked off his emotions as he attacked. 18 watched as Naruto was bodying Cell. He was beating him down as Naruto was getting faster and stronger. As Naruto said one word, Kaioken. There was no limitations on his body because his human part was not held back by his robot part and his robot part was not held back by his human part. That is when 18 figured out something. Naruto's ability was mimicry. The moment he saw Cell charge Nakame, he did the same thing and release it. He also did Vegeta final attack. He could see the technique and do them almost instantaneously. That was amazing. As the fight dragged on, it was immense, epic. As they were destroying the surrounding island, she felt bad though because Naruto knew that she was here yet. He was destroying the place. But he seemed to have shut his emotions off. That is when Naruto realized that she was still here after he told her to leave. She thought that Cell was dead but he was alive. 17 knocked her out of the way as he absorbed Cell. That is when 16 arrived with Piccolo in tow. It seems that the both of them were fighting until they came to a common understanding about the new threat that was Cell. 16 told her that she will have to get out of here along with Piccolo while the two of them remain. As Cell started to transform into his second stage, she snapped her gaze towards Naruto. What? She said. So yeah guys, basically let's be left off you guys can switch across the place for yourself. And don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs of the other channels. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say we jump right into this? Begin now guys. I will fight with you, 18 said. After hearing 16 and Naruto plan to fight Cell. No, you will not, 16 said. You are the one that Cell seek to absorb. We cannot allow that. 16 is right, said Naruto. Now is not the time. She cut him off. Now is the time, she said. If we all attack now, together, we can Naruto cut her off. We what, he said. As he took hold of her shoulders and shook her. We fight. We die. Even if all four of us attack Cell right now, while he's still transforming, we still wouldn't stand a chance. Sixteen and I are the only ones capable of doing this. I see that now. Why can't you, he said. Because you're going to die, and I don't want you to. In that moment, 18 would have given anything to take those words back. I don't want you to, she said, as she grabbed onto his GI. She held on, refusing to let go. Refusing to let Naruto walk to his death. She knew she couldn't hold on forever. She knew that there was a lot to risk for her to be absorbed by Cell. When he came after her, but she couldn't. Her feelings were pouring out right now. In a tidal wave of emotion that she could not Control them. 18. I. She nodded her head, cutting him off. There were tears in her eyes, but she refused to let them fall. Be safe, alright? You know I can't promise that, said Naruto. Well then, she said. As her hands came up and grabbed him by the face, she kissed him. And he kissed her back. She didn't know why she had kissed him, but she just did. As they pulled back, that should have been our first kiss. She whispered in his ear, I'm sorry that it was not. Naruto did not say anything, because he did not need to. She could see just how. Don't die, she whispered. It's time, Piccolo was suddenly there, pulling her aside by the elbow. We got a lot of ground to cover. 18 managed the barriers of nods, and then she was gone, ascending into the sky, like an angel. Naruto watched her go, along with 16. The slightest of smiles on his features. A violent shockwave shook the ground seconds later, alerting them to Cell, who had completed his transformation. Both android cringe as they descended down towards the ground, knowing that their fight is going to be futile, but even so, they descended down with pride in their hearts and a smile on their face. And Cell was then suddenly there, in a flash of light. He certainly looked different, and not in a good way. If anything, he was even more revolting than before. His green skin had not changed, but it resembled a human now. Instead of a disgusting insect, save for that massive tail and those hideous fish lips. And then he spoke. Now then, he greeted in a brash, lisping voice. Where were we, boy? He asked. Alright, 
It looks like he has not noticed 18 yet. Nor to commend himself. Let's keep it that way. We just have to stall him. I believe I was kicking your ass. He forced a smile to his face. The Kaioken surging around him to double. And then four times normal strength. Red tinged his vision at the corner. He could take this skill higher. However, even the Kaioken had his limits. Yes, I remember, Cell said. His face twisting up into a snarl. I think I owe you something for that. Is that so, said Naruto. You're going to have a hard time collecting if that's all the power. Naruto was cut off as he felt pain. Blinding pain. He barely had time to blink as he was slammed viciously into the earth. As Cell had slammed him face first into the ground. When did he? His body react as he brought his arms up. As Cell heel drop into his guard. Sending him deeper into the earth. The true pain did not come from his back. But from his right arm that Cell had stomped on. With tremendous force. All the bones and wire in that limb. Shatter like glass. Unable to withstand the force from that blow. Naruto refused to cry out though. As he felt his regeneration take over. Cell would have struck again. If not for two pair of hands. That grab onto his tail and yank him, swinging him around. As 16 threw him away from Naruto. No real damage was done to Cell, but it did give Naruto a welcome breather. 16, he said. Thanks, I owe you. Cell snorted. One more weakling will not make any more difference. Is that so? Naruto exchanged a glance with 16. Can you get behind that freak? While I distract him, he whispered. Sixteen seemed to consider it for a moment. It is possible. Then here we go, said Naruto. As he boosts his aura higher, the crimson spark of the Kaioken, eating at the ear around him. Time five, no higher. Times ten, no higher. Times twenty. He draw both of his hands back, cuffing his palms together. As your light start to burn with such intensity, that it started to scorch his skin. Ka. Cell started to walk forward. Stepping towards the blinding light. No to read his smug expression. He was overconfident. Arrogance in his power. He thought this would not be enough to stop him. And it might not be. He was well aware that the android. Was now seven times stronger than him. But by God. May. No to start to call a technique. He will put him down. As Naruto felt his whole body trembling with the power. As he started to force it out. The blood vessels in his eyes start to burst. Every ounce of his power focused into a single monumental attack. There's a good chance that he would destroy the earth if he missed. But he would not miss. He could not miss. He would end cell or die trying. Hopefully the former because he truly want to be with 18. But if it meant he had to die to end this monster, then so be it. Now, said Naruto as he paused in his chant. If you truly want to test your strength, stay right where you are. Cell snarl at that as he refused to even flinch. Do your worst, boy. That's right, you idiot, Naruto thought. Laughing to himself. Stay right where you are. As Naruto threw his hands forward releasing the heavenly fire within. Ha! He yelled out. 18 felt it. She recognized a surge in Naruto energy. Realizing that he must be pushing himself to his absolute limits. He would not last much longer. It was enough to make her turn around right then and there. But Piccolo would not have any of that. She knew the moment she tried to go back. No, the very second that she tried to place Naruto's safety above her own, Namekian will stop her. It broke her heart to leave Naruto and 16 behind to flee like a coward while they stay behind. Even now she could feel herself slowing down as she wore with her self-preservation and her feelings for her fellow blonde. Eventually though, the latter won out. I can't. I can't leave him there to die. She fainted to the right and when the Namekian moved to block her, she went to the left instead. Caught off guard, Piccolo only had a sudden instant to ride straight 
that she was faking out on him before her feet planted into his stomach. And then she was gone, rushing back towards the island, Naruto she thought as she went after him. Idiot! Piccolo said pulling himself up as he went after her cursing Dr. Jiro and his creations the whole entire time. Meanwhile, Cell did not even bother to dodge. He stood there like he was a god. As the Kamehameha wave enveloped him, he braced himself, refusing to flinch as the attack broke through 17's barrier. It tore into his armor. It sneered his flesh. However, he started to repel it with effort. Back in his previous form, he could not have done this. He would have been gone, but now, he stood firm and tall, standing his grounds. As the Kamehame wave destroyed everything behind him, as he stood, pushing through. If that's all you have to offer, then, Cell was cut off. Hell flash! A wave of golden light slammed right into the android unprotected flank, tearing through him like he was made of tissue paper. Sixteen, he cursed. But it did not matter. He would just regenerate a new one. But he might not have that chance if he continued to stay in this inferno. He raised his key and yelled, releasing a violent force, blowing back the both of them. As the attack went off in a blinding light, blinding all on the island, slowly he brought his arms down. From blocking the attack, is that it? he asked. Sixteen took a hesitant step backwards. His power is greater than I feared. You gotta be kidding me. Naruto felt all of his power abandon him, his stamina drained by the intense demanding of the Kaioken. How could he survive that? Is he immortal? Even androids had their limits. He sank to his knees as he gasped for breath. There is no way. His best was just not good enough. This was the end. He had nothing left to give. Cell struck hard, driving his hand into the blonde stomach. As Naruto's face twisted into agony as Cell hand burst through his back. As 16 turned to register, Naruto defeat, moving in to stop it but Cell raised his hand. And half of 16's face was blown off as he collapsed down to the ground. The key blast knocking 16 away. As Naruto was still impaled upon Cell's hand, Cell held him there as he snarled at the boy that was giving him so much trouble earlier. To think such a no count was able to impede him in his previous form. He was merely an insect now, a bug compared to his power, a bug that he will squash. Get away from him you bastard! A pink key blast slammed into Cell back. As his hand slipped from Naruto who dropped to the ground, Cell no longer cared for his fate. As he looked up to see who did that, but he could not sense them. Oh, he thought to himself. What he found brought a smile to his face. 18. How good of you to return. It saved me the trouble of tracking you down myself. 18 was beyond reasoning right now. She could see Naruto there dying. He was fading. All that was left was rage. She didn't care if Cell absorbed her. She did not care if she died. All she cared for. I am going to crush you and throw you into the wind. By all means, said Cell. Naruto was on the ground as he watched Cell, who had yet to regenerate his tail, toyed with her. Idiot, he thought. She should have run. 21. Naruto turned to see. 16 crawling towards him. We must unite. Naruto released a broken laugh as he flopped onto his back. He was bleeding out. No amount of regeneration would save him. Not this time. Somehow though, he still found the strength to smile. If he was bleeding, that meant he was still mostly human. Somehow the thought made him smile. For 16 to suggest that, they must be in bad shape, the two of them. Funny, I think you just said something about allowing me to absorb you. I did. I must have hit my head harder than I thought, said Naruto. We are in no shape till 16 cut him off. Place your hand on my chest for our union to transpire. As Naruto looked towards him, 
if we unite, will I still be me? I do not know, 16 said. I expect only one of us will remain, after the union. But you will gain great power, power to ride the cell. Naruto could feel Piccolo fighting alongside 18 now. It was a losing battle though the Namekian put up a powerful fight. He was no match. In a matter of moments he would be defeated and then, 18 would be absorbed. He couldn't allow that even if it meant losing himself. Slowly but surely he placed a hand on the androids, armor chest. It's been real 16. 16 cracked a smile at that. Indeed. You guys are cool, he said. As Naruto smiled. So what now, he said. This, 16 said squinting his eyes. At first, Naruto wondered what it meant until. He felt it. The tiny spark of consciousness inside of him started to expand. Into a bright, overwhelming sun. It swallowed both him and 16. As Naruto felt like he was watching from the outside. As his body was broken down in front of his very eyes. Like he was witnessing the event from afar. Someone being put together making them whole once again. He felt the memories flooding back to him. As he stretched out his arms embracing them. Like a long lost friend. He felt the pain, the sorrow, the joy. And then love. A love that was so fierce. It took the very breath out of his lungs. And left him speechless. He had loved before, lost, and then loved again. Their names escaped him but their faces did not. As they were now truly out of his reach though, out of his grasp. There were other memories as well, 16's memories. There was a gentleness to the giant that astounded him. A willingness for peace that left him stunned. He felt what remained of the android dissolve into him, bringing back so much. Goodbye my friend, said Naruto. That was when the transformation fully began. A wave of raw energy forcing into his veins, scouring them clean. As he could feel himself changing, growing taller. 18 he thought. He could fight for her now. He could protect her. This time he would crush Cell. And he will enjoy every second of it. The universe itself held its breath. Awaiting the birth of a new warrior. The entire island quaking beneath the two androids. Cell whirled away from the fight above as he looked down. What? What is this? This is unreal, said Piccolo. When the smoke clear Naruto and 16 were gone, someone else stood in their place. His hair now had crimson going down in it. Every inch of him was chiseled like he had been sculpted from the hardest granite. Several shades of shining light was around him. Enveloping him in a bright gold and crimson light, he stepped forward. Blue and red eyes, Mitch Match, looking towards 18. Naruto, is that you? She said, looking towards New Warrior. He finally spoke. Naruto Uzumaki, he said. His words were monotone. Classifications Shinobi, Jonin Rank. Status, Decease, Much the 18's ire he was rattling. Facts and Data, Techniques, Shadow Clone Jutsu, Rasengan, Raseng Shuriken, Sage Mode, No knowledge of Genjutsu, Limited knowledge of Taijutsu, Time of Death, Unknown, Age of Death, Unknown, Romantical Attachments, Classified, A tiny smirk broke on his face. It seems you're right after all, 16. Gone were the flat, emotionless robot words. And now his voice sounded like a true warrior, ready to strike. This power, it's incredible. Before 18 could even ask what he meant, the island started to shake. It starts slowly at first until everything starts to rise. Debris, dust, stones, crimson sparks split into the heavens itself. Her hair was standing on end. Naruto threw his head back in roar. A violent, crimson aura surrounded him. The sky darkened. The seas quiver. The very earth itself was trembling violently. His roar turned into a laughter. A laughter of joy. As he fixated his eyes on Cell. Cell, he said. 
And I'm going to tear you apart. Unless you like to surrender. What? To a piece of junk like you, Cell said. No. I think I'll see what you have to offer, my dear boy. You may have united with 16, but that still doesn't make you stronger than me. And I'll prove it. As he motioned with two fingers to come. Here, I'll give you a free shot. I suggest that you make the most of it. 18 barely saw anything. The next thing she knew, Naruto was in front of Cell. His feet crushing against Cell's knees. Crushed it backward as there was a crunching sound. Piccolo was shocked, taken aback not seeing the movement. Cell crumbled down to the ground, his eyes wide in shock. What? What have you done? He looked down. What? What have you done? You gave me a free shot, said Naruto. My knees. My knees. Cell started to blubber to himself. At the sound of his voice, he had not expect this in the slightest. 18. Certainly had not. We. We just might have a chance after all. Piccolo murmured. Cell was on the ground hissing and screeching in pain. As Naruto's voice was calm and cool. Almost mocking. Surrender is once again recommended. Never, Cell said. He moved forward and drive a punch. However, Naruto caught the wrist. Before he knocked Cell hang away. And drive a kick right into his rib cage. Blood exploded out of his mouth. As his lungs collapsed. Nevertheless, with Naruto being so close to the other hand. Charge a key blast and fire it towards Naruto's face. But Naruto tilted his head as it passed him. He then slammed a fist into Cell's face, knocking him back. As blood exploded from the android once again. With his legs up and running, Cell attack. However, hold still, he yelled. He could not hit him. As Naruto vanished in thin air, Cell looked around trying to find him when a blow slammed him right into the sea. Cell was not back up in the sky. As the heavens quaked, lightning, electricity poured down. The ground shook. Where did he get all that power from? 18 thought. Cell was blasted into the sea. He shattered the sound barrier as he was sent flying. As Naruto Mitch Match eyes looked down. Cell, he said. Get out here. I know that's not enough to kill you. A blast blew from the sea. However, Naruto slapped it away like it was a child's blast. Cell appeared behind him trying to bring his hands down on him. Naruto turned and slammed the fist into his guts. Cell keeled over as Naruto pushed him back. Cell spat before he raged and attacked, throwing punches from left to right. They broke apart once again after engaging. As Cell dabbed at his lips, valiant effort, 21, he said, as he dripped blood. But you will have to unite with more than a piece of scrap if you expect to beat me. Hearing that pissed Naruto off. Fine then, this time, I'll rip off your head. He lunged forward just to do that, until a massive power hung over the boat of their head. They were so engrossed in their fight that they did not notice his approach, until it was too late. As Naruto looked up surprised, where had such energy come from, and who could be wheeling the- Well, well, well. The Prince of All Saiyan said, fresh out of the hyperbolic time chamber. As he snarled down towards the two android. What do we have here? Another pair of tin toasters for the scrap heap. As his smile grew. Now then, which one of you want to die first? Said Vegeta. As Naruto looked up towards them. The prince of all Saiyans and his son, Trunks. Hanging over their head like a pair of grim reapers. Coming to take their heads. One look at them told him that these were not the same Saiyans that he fought before. They were stronger. He did not know how but somehow, father and son were stronger than him. He had yet to test the ultimate limit of his new form but facing a pair of supered up Super Saiyans was on his to-do list. He might win but he would come out so battered that he would be easy picking for sell. No, he could not do that. Besides, he reminded himself he is not here to fight Vegeta or Trunks. His only reason for existing at this very instant was 18. She wasn't just his precious person, she was 
the precious person. The reason why he first cast aside his doubt and learned to fly. The catalyst behind him merging with 16. He was afraid of what might happen if Cell got his hands on her. He was terrified of losing her. As he glanced towards Cell, he would not let him out of his sight. Cell on the other hand, he seemed rather amused. Did he truly think himself to be unstoppable? Or perhaps he lacked any common sense? He was beginning to think that it was the latter. Their battle had brought them out to this island. Far away from Goku's house. That was a remote location by itself. There was absolutely no chance of escaping a pairs of Super Saiyans intact. Not when he had to safeguard 18. You could always absorb her. A dark voice in his head suggested. Naruto froze, the thought had never occurred to him. If he were to absorb 18, not only would Cell never be able to complete his evolution, but he himself would become far more po- No! What was he thinking? He will not do that. Is that you, boy? Super Vegeta laughed as he scoffed down towards Naruto. Unaware of Naruto's struggles, looks like you've gotten a little stronger since we last met. But then again, so have I. Naruto jerked back half a second as Vegeta, materialized in front of him, filled with arrogance. A fist drive into Naruto's stomach before he could even react. Before he could pull up his Kaioken before he could move back. Naruto leaned over as the fist buried into his stomach. Blood dribbled between his lips. How, how did you get so strong? Vegeta laughed. Simple. Push-ups, sit-ups, and plenty of juice. Behind him, 18 cried out. It was the only warning Naruto had before. Vegeta hit him again. That punch made Cell attack look rather weak. However, just as Vegeta punched and harmed him, it awoke in something within his mind, a memory. The Shidori, slamming into his lungs, tearing through flesh and bone. Those red eyes looking down at him. Another punch slammed right into him. As Naruto staggered, what was going on? Why? Couldn't he fight back? What was wrong with him? As he felt Cell watching, reveling in his humiliation, I know that this is not enough to stop you, dope. A voice resonated through his mind. His face came into view. Dark hair, eyes the color of blood. Narrowing with contempt and scorn, his mouth set into a frown. Wait. Did he die? No, he wasn't dead. No, you dope, you're not dead. Not yet, though. But if you don't do something about it, you will die. Naruto was overwhelmed by a powerful nostalgia. He knew this man, this specter from the past. Get up! He felt a hand touch his shoulder. What? Was this not a memory? Why was he feeling it? You were stronger than this. Far stronger when you kill me, weren't you? Use that strength. Use that power to protect your precious person. Don't let her die this time. Just like that the name came back to him. Sasuke. Fight. The image in front of him said. Fight. Remind me. Why you still carry on. Naruto had lashed out and grabbed Vegeta's wrist. The Saiyan tried to pull back. But to his shock and horror. He could not move. He could not free his arm. Naruto's eyes start to change. A orange hue start to arrive over his eyelids. Sage mode. Hey, Vegeta. He grinned. What do you get when you put a prince through a grinder? What? The Saiyan said as Naruto chuckled. No! Piccolo shouted out. As he realized the energy inside of the android's body. As he realized what he intended to do. Naruto flew up in the air with Vegeta. As Enji was leaking out of his body, Vegeta tried to let Naruto release him, but he could not. Let's find out, said Naruto. Naruto released the Saiyan before releasing a blast that 18 could only describe as monstrous. The attack slammed into the Saiyan, blasting him clear across the horizon as he was sent flying away. One down, two to go. Piccolo was in awe and shock as he no longer knew whether to consider the blonde an enemy or ally. He was clearly many many times stronger than him. After all he had just made mincemeat of Vegeta. 
it must have something to do with his eyes. The moment they changed his power skyrocketed. As Naruto shouted, I made a promise. I swear that I would not let anyone touch her. He snapped his gaze towards Cell. And that means you. Boy, said Cell. Do you really think that you can? Cell was cut off as Naruto appeared in front of him. And blew his head clean off with a key blast. The body dropped to its knees. And collapsed. 18 was shocked. Was that it? Was that the end? Naruto drive his heel into Cell's gut. Breaking the part of the island down into the water. He then proceeded to rain down attacks after attacks that caused the water to explode violently. They watch as Cell body was enveloped inside the water. Even if that was not enough to kill him, it should delay him enough. For Android, a voice shouted out as Naruto turned. It was none other than Vegeta, hurtling back towards him. He braced himself as the Saiyan slammed into him. Too little too late as Vegeta grabbed him by the throat. As Naruto realized that his body was more truly human, even now, seeing that he needed to breathe. If he was an android, he would not be needing oxygen. Not a bad shot, android, but this time, your mind, Vegeta said with a roar. Until bam, a fist slammed into his face, knocking him back. But Vegeta did not seem upset, in fact, he seemed pleased. To test his new powers, Naruto looked towards his savior. Cell? He was right. The android was not dead. He had regrown his head. He had piccolo cells after all. Naruto expected Cell to attack him, but he gave him an unpleasing smile. Don't misunderstand me, brat. I am the only one that is allowed to kill you. Besides, I find your new power intriguing. Perhaps I should absorb you instead, Cell said. A plan started to formulate in Naruto's mind. You're right, he said, raising his hands. I am much too weak to fight him. But if someone stronger would be willing to fight him. Cell cracked out a laugh, his pride, being stroked by Naruto words. I think I will. And then you will be mine, 21. Yeah, just keep telling yourself that, Naruto thought to himself. As he watches Cell move towards the Saiyan. Fool. The only thing that he will achieve will be his demise. Still, he waited for him to engage Vegeta in combat. He then reached out as he took 18's hand. She squeaked. Stop making strange noises, he said. As he brushed her hair from her face. I told you, I would keep you safe, didn't I? She nodded slowly, looking like she wanted to say more to him. When all this is over, she murmured. I owe you a date. As Naruto smiled at that. We're leaving, he whispered to her. Without another word, he took the disguise. Before, someone appeared in front of them. And where do you think you're going with that android? Naruto hissed, looking towards one that blocked them. Trunks. Stupid boy, he said as he placed himself between the Saiyan and 18. I don't want to fight you. It seems like Trunks would not listen as he tried. Well, he did punch Naruto, but Naruto barely moved. He was stronger. Yes, he was. There was no doubt about that. He had the power inside of him. All he needed to do was bring it out. To bring out that monstrous power that was circulating all through him. He pulled. He pulled hard. Raw power that he gained from uniting with 16. It exploded inside of him like a wildfire. Is here standing on end. With his long blonde hair so rigid, one might compare him to a Super Saiyan, but with the color of his eyes and his aura, Naruto did not make such comparison. Kaioken, times 50. Son Goku's once mighty technique surged through his veins, empowering him, enabling him. His body adjusted the power, stabilized it, and made it his own. Dr. Dro was truly a genius for giving this technique to him. After absorbing 16, he could increase the Kaiken power almost a hundredfold. Slowly he turned to face the son of Vegeta, basking in the power that he held. Such power, with a simple attack he could wipe away the planet if he wanted to. Wait, no, Naruto reined himself in. He would not let this go to his ego. 
he must not let it get the best of him. He didn't want to rule the world or destroy it. All he wanted was to protect 18. And if that meant killing a Saiyan, well, he always knew that eventually he will have to get his hands dirty. Trunks, Naruto said his voice was deep and dark. I know you. You're nowhere near as foolish as your father. So I'm going to give you one chance to bat down. Let us leave. Better yet, help me destroy Cell. Do that and I swear, you will never hear from either of us again. For a moment, Naruto thought he would listen. Until his expression hardened into one. That Naruto knew too well. Hatred. Chunks had been too... Badly hurt by the androids to ever. Listen to a word that come out of his mouth. Nothing he's saying now would convince him. You don't believe me. Naruto sighed. Well then, I guess all that is left is for me to decide how I'm going to... Naruto was cut off. Chunks' response was to drive a fist right into his face. Naruto barely moved. Despite Trunks trying to blow his head off his body, Naruto did not move. His body remained where it was his head, just slightly turning. Is that it? He asked with a smile. Impossible, Trunks thought to himself. I put everything I had in that punch. It must be this red aura of his. As Naruto's smile grew, my turn, boy, he said. He rammed his knee into Trunks' stomach fast. Trunks gagged before. A flurry of fists meet his face that sent him railing as Naruto launched himself towards the half Saiyan and then they were gone moving at speeds that could not be seen by the naked eye. Piccolo who was able to keep his distance watched as violent shockwaves rip through the air as the cyborg and Saiyans rage across the skies. They're moving so fast and I'm making thought. I can't even keep up with their speed. 18 also gawk in shock. Where was Naruto getting all this power? He kept saying that he wanted to protect her. Was that what drove him to such lengths? For her sake. Idiot she thought. She definitely owe him a date when this was all over. Maybe more. It never occurred to her to pay attention to Vegeta fight with Cell. To focus on the bio android. Who found out the prince's greatest weakness. His arrogance and overconfident. She was so focused on the bat that was in front of her. She did not feel the android creep upon her. As Vegeta just made a deal with the devil. To get a better fight. Lacking the NG sensor ability. She never realized until it was too late. Much too late. As for Naruto he was raining down blows on trunks. Due to his larger size and superior speed. And strength as well. For once he was grateful to Dr. Jiro. If the Kaioken had not been placed in his mind. Then he wouldn't have been able to take apart. His opponent so swiftly. And he was enjoying it. What better way to humiliate Vegeta than. To beat down upon his son. His design was truly superior. The longer their battle raged. The stronger he become. Chunks found himself on defensive as he was unable. To stop the blows. Now that Naruto was wielding Sage more than Kaioken. He was a force of nature. Now it was time to end this as he threw. Chunks down below. His body slamming through the earth. What's wrong? He found himself laughing as he smashed Chunks into the earth, towering over Chunks' beaten form. I thought you were going to destroy me. He reached down and grabbed him by the shirt. Say goodnight. Naruto! Naruto snapped his head around to see. 18. His last sight of her was her, being absorbed. Her legs kick against the ear trying to find purchase where none to be found. No. Time seemed to slow down as he turned his back on Trunks. As he tried to save her. As he flew through the sky. But even for all of his speed he almost was not fast enough. By the time he reached Cell. 18 was almost completely gone. But not entirely. His fingers closer on her feet. As he gripped onto them. As he started to pull. Inch by inch he pulled her back. Denying Cell his perfection. He could see her waist, then her stomach. Cell striked out at him, but Naruto did not even give him a response as he started to pull 18 out. He was stronger than Cell, he no longer felt his blows. Just a few more seconds and she would be fully whack. Vegeta slammed a brutal kick into his back, blasting him from the sky. Naruto screamed out as his hand released 18. 
a cry of powerlessness, exasperation, rage. He was forced to watch as Cell sucked her down. Stop it. Give her back, he yelled. Stop your wailing, Android. You can have your bot back once I'm finished with Cell, said Vegeta. Damn you, Vegeta. Piccolo swore. You've doomed us all. As he watched Cell transforming. As Naruto eyes were wide as he saw Cell transforming. 18. She was... She was gone. He watched her die. How could he let that happen? How? How could he let that happen? He felt himself slipping. Something was... He was... He couldn't control it. The last sense of his sanity was snapping. He was losing all control. The monster that was inside of him was awoken. And he could not stop it. He was angry. He was enraged. Self-control was slipping through his fingers. He could not stop it. No one could. The power was coming out of him. And it would not stop until it had. What it wanted. Destruction. Complete, utter annihilation. I, the winds, stirred around him. As Naruto sobbed, great, he even gasped, tearing out of his chest. 18 was gone, and it was all of his fault. He thought he could protect her. He really tried to, but in the end, what did he do? He failed. He was a failure. He let his pride get the better of him. He got wrapped up in the battle with Trunks. It was stupid of him. So stupid of him. But not he alone was to blame for this. There was Cell who took her away. And there was also Vegeta. His hero was standing at end. Rage boiled through him. Burning through his coils. Ungodly amount of power started to rage inside of him. Wanting destruction. Wanting to kill. Everything around him. He was going to rip them apart. Cell must pay. So did Vegeta. He would pay for what he let done. Cracks start to sprawl over his body. The strain becoming too much. I won't let you get away with this. His hand tearing into the ground. Vegeta frowned. Where was this incredible power coming from? From this tin toaster? Weary, he stepped back. As Naruto wounds shut like they were never there. His body was trembling. Quivering with the effort that he needed to uphold. To contain this godly power. Cell must have felt it as well as he pushed the transformation. To get there quicker. Naruto did not hear how many times Cell transformed. Even if this new form was 10,000 times stronger than him. It would not make a single difference. A single phrase echoed in the shinobi's mind. A phrase from a long time ago. Out of darkness and into the light. The demon has returned. And come back to fight. Naruto arched his head back as he screamed. He could feel the transformation coming on now. Since the change is taking place inside of him. The circuitry that Dr. Drew placed inside of him was fading away. As he was regaining his humanity. A creature of flesh and metal was beginning to born. Granting him more power than he ever known. More than he even know what to do with. His skin took on a golden translucent glow. It's here getting longer. The skies darkened overhead. Golden lightning was actually clashing down. As it was a sign of a new power coming out. The red and blue melting together to become in one. Sage mode blended with the slits of Karama eyes, creating a plus sign. His white cornea became black. A golden aura surrounded him. It wrapped around him, encasing him. The twin transformation destabilized the island as it crashed. Falling into the water. It's about time Vegeta said. As he was eager for a fight. Maybe I'll get a decent warm up out of this after all. And the lights finally dimmed down. As the transformations ascended. Vegeta saw the eyes of the android looking at him. Well now he snarled. Are you angry because you lost your little friend? Funny. I did not think machines could feel love. I did love her, said Naruto. But now, I am death. I am the answer to all living things that cry for vengeance. I am the sword of hatred, the darkness that smother all. I am despair. I lied to 18. 
a nightmare to you. I am no longer known as Android 21. I am Super 21 he yell. The clouds blowing away. Dust and debris blowing away. A few yards away the now complete cell was smiling. 21 key has increased considerably. Perhaps I can test my complete power on him once he's finished with Vegeta. The irony was not lost on him. Now that he united with 18, his power was nearly unmatched. He will enjoy this battle immensely. What better way than to see the Prince of All Saints face in the mud. As Naruto looked towards his hands, he remembered this. This form was similar to when him and Kurama came to agreement. But now his power seemed to stretch on without end. An endless amount of energy that he can dive into anytime he wanted. All of this was without the Kaioken. He could probably go times 100 without breaking a sweat. And he was still not complete. He could feel it. There were still parts that were missing for his true power to rain out. His power was still not complete. Nowhere there. But it doesn't matter. Those who took 18 away, those who caused her death, will suffer. The first one was the Prince of All Saiyan. Slaughter the Prince of All Saiyan. But guys, we end up so right here. If you want to see next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification stay posted. Remember to share to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the what ifs of the other channels. Yes, I indeed have four of them guys which I post what if on every single day for guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that right subscribe button and become a part of the anime king family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. And don't forget to turn on the bell notification to see exactly when I post. So without further ado or wasting more time. What do you say we jump right into this begin? Now guys, 